While there are a few non-negotiables when it comes to having a productive garden, like full sun, well-draining nutrient-rich soil, having deep raised beds or wide rows is not one of them. In fact, you might be surprised that anything that grows in a big garden or has wide rows can grow in a container or something similar. So in this video, let's talk about some of the alternatives to those more traditional routes. So as we get started on those options, let's talk about the common things that you need to have. And first of all, full sun, or at least six hours, that's your target. And you want really good, well-draining soil that's nutrient rich. But if you have that, you're off to a very good start. So if you think that you don't have enough room to have a productive edible garden, think again. Even a small grow bag like this one right here is only seven gallons and it is growing a full-size indeterminate tomato. Now it's only been in here about a month, but you can see how well it's doing along with some tomatoes already forming. So that's a grow bag. We'll talk more about those in a second. But even something as simple as the standard five gallon bucket. Now who doesn't have one of these laying around? And if you don't, you can buy these for next to nothing. Under $5 for sure, pretty much anywhere you go. But this is great because it's very deep. In fact, this is deeper than most raised beds. So you're off to a good start there. It's plenty deep enough because you do want to have enough room for those roots to at least go down. Now, if you're wondering if you need more room for them to grow out, don't worry about that with edibles because they're only going to be in a growing environment for several months. And by that time, they probably haven't even reached the edge. And if they do, they don't need to go much further than that. So a five gallon bucket really is good. Now let's keep in mind, a bucket is made for holding liquid, not leaking. So the bucket isn't going to have drainage holes initially. So you're going to need to add that because that is one of the most important things about success in a bucket. And of course, all you need to make those holes is a drill with a big bit. So first things first, let me go ahead and get my safety glasses on and then we'll get drilling. So I picked the biggest bit in my drill kit and I'm just going to go around the perimeter in several places and create those holes. So there we have it. That's five holes and that's plenty. If you want to go with more, that's fine too. But I'd say at least five nice size holes. And then the other thing you want to make sure that you have in your bucket or any container for that matter is some really good quality potting mix or container mix, either one. And then really, they're going to look pretty much the same. So here's a good quality product. But when you're looking at it, look at the ingredients on the package. But as you're visually inspecting it, what you see there, those little white flakes there, those things that look like styrofoam or popcorn, that's called perlite. And that's there specifically for drainage. And then there's some wood finds in here and other things that help improve the drainage. But well draining, high quality, nutrient rich soil will really get your plants off to a good start and keep them growing strong. So those are the two things, good drainage and really high quality soil that drains well. That's what you want to focus on. And of course, good sun. Containers are just fancy buckets when you think about it. But unlike buckets, you have many more options for the material, shape, and size, from inexpensive terracotta to fancy ceramics, metal, and even repurposed items work. The sky's the limit. In fact, you don't even need something as large as a five gallon container for smaller plants, such as lettuce or spinach or herbs. Like buckets and containers, think of grow bags as flexible containers with handles and that you can easily store when not in use. Grow bags are typically made from recycled plastic materials, such as water bottles. They're strong, yet very lightweight, come in various colors and sizes, affordable, and even better ones will last for years. I use grow bags as many pop-up gardens all around my garden, inside and out, like these 20 and 25 gallon grow bags for all my potatoes this year. They're a very convenient way to grow anything, anywhere, especially if you need some extra room to grow a few more plants. Straw bales have been a popular option for several years now. Think of them kind of like a ready-made mini raised bed. The bales are usually easy to find at the box stores and typically cost between $5 and $10. The bales can be transplanted directly into after you've conditioned them for a couple weeks with a nitrogen source to break down the straw a bit to make it more soil-like and conducive to retaining moisture and providing nutrients. Options for what you can grow in straw bales are virtually unlimited. I use them to grow full-size tomato plants along my back trellis, but you could also set up as many bales as you like and use them to grow your entire garden. And perhaps the easiest option of all is the soil bag itself. Now, whether it's an upright bag like this, which is very convenient, looks like a container, or the traditional bag laying on its side, 
cut it open, but it already has the soil in it. The plastic will help keep the soil warm to get your seeds or your seedlings off to a fast start. And as long as you poke holes in the bottom for drainage, you have everything you need right there in that bag. And that's as easy as it gets. But there you have five simple alternatives that are easy, effective, and affordable to the raised bed options or the in-ground beds. And I am sure that you will find success and very happy with whatever you decide. Happy gardening.